Hello, and welcome back to The Point, the chess program where we examine crimes in the opening and discover the most exact tactical punishments. I am your host, Chris Torres, and today we will be examining the famous encounter between De La Gaulle and Saint Brie, played in Paris in 1750. The winning motif has been named after Legal, and the Legal's trap is a pattern every student of the game should be familiar with. Francois-Antoine de Legal de Cumur was born on September the 4th, 1702, in Versailles. De Legal was one of the strongest chess players of the 18th century, and would play chess for bets at the acclaimed Café de la Regence, regularly giving odds of a pawn and a move, knight, rook, and so forth to his customers. Camus Sire de Legal was regarded as the strongest chess player in France until he was surpassed by his student, François-André Philidor. De Legal died in 1792 at the ripe old age of 89. Marquis de Saint-Brie was a wealthy amateur chess player whose only recorded game is the loss in today's feature lesson. St. Brie's namesake is that of an agricultural region of France known for its fine wines and cheeses. In addition to our feature game, the year 1750 was also noteworthy for being the year the great composer Johann Sebastian Bach died in Leipzig, Germany, and in America Benjamin Franklin drew up plans for a sentry box designed to prove his theory that lightning was an electrical phenomenon. Finally, on March 16th, Caroline Lucretia Herschel, the first woman astronomer, was born in Hanover, Germany. 1750 was a transformative time indeed. Before we get going, let's review our 10 opening rules. Number one, open with a center pawn. Number two, develop with threats. Number three, knights before bishops. Number four, don't move the same piece twice. Number five, make as few pawn moves as possible in the opening. Number six, don't bring out your queen too early. Number seven, castle as soon as possibly, preferably on the king's side. Number eight, always play to gain control of the center. Number nine, try to maintain at least one pawn in the center. And number 10, don't sacrifice without a clear and adequate reason. And now to our feature game between De La Gaulle and Saint Brie. Enjoy. De La Gaulle starts with 1e4, putting a pawn in the center. Saint Brie responds with e5. So far, so good. Develop with threats, knights before bishops, knight f3. Black plays d6, the Philidor's defense. Oddly enough, named after De La Gaulle's student, Andre Philidor. Bishop c4, attacking the square f7, the weak point in e4, e5 openings. Black plays bishop g4, pinning the knight to the queen. However, um, not bringing a knight out before a bishop and placing a bishop where it is on an undefended square. White plays knight c3, developing another piece. White has three pieces developed. Black only has one. Black plays pawn g6. Another slow pawn move, uh, presumably opening up the house for the bishop, but a slow pawn move nonetheless. Can you guess De Legal's very, very powerful move? I'll give you about five seconds. Examine the whole position. Look at your checks, captures, and threats. Ready? De La Gaulle plays knight takes e5, a move that is quite surprising and looks a little bit crazy. Doesn't that just give away the queen? St. Marie does not think twice, takes the queen. And now what do you think De La Gaulle plays? I'll give you a couple seconds. If you guessed bishop takes f7 check, you are correct. Black plays king e7. And now finally, finally, can you spot de la Gaulle's last move? If you guessed knight d5 checkmate, you are correct. 
What a fantastic, fantastic checkmate. It's called Legal's Trap. This is called Legal's Mate. Um, this occurs in a lot of different openings. In the future, we will look at many, many different examples of Legal's Trap leading to Legal's Mate. Um, I know I have used this dozens of times. My students have as well. It's good to know. Now let's go back and look at a couple what ifs real fast. So we get up to move four and black plays the slow pawn g6 move. What if he had played knight c6? Hmm. So Legal's mate is not going to work so well, so well here. Because if you play knight takes e5, black can simply play knight takes e5 back, right? So what, sometimes my students say, well, if black plays knight c6, what would have happened? And oftentimes we play it out on the board. I like to play h3 here because more often than not, I've, I've learned that black likes to try and keep his pin on that knight on f3 to the queen on d1. So he plays bishop h5. And now I have something neat that's like uh, Legal's trap. It's like Legal's mate. Um, it's, it's quite similar. Knight takes e5. Now black does not have to take our queen. If he takes our queen, we can still checkmate. But he probably is going to play knight takes e5 here. Then we'll play queen takes h5. Then he plays knight takes c4, seemingly look like he's, get, he's gaining an extra piece, except we have this nice fork. Queen b5, check. Block the check. Queen takes c4. And we're up a pawn. We have a pawn in the center and two pieces developed. White is doing fine here. Now let's look at our second what if. Our second what if occurs instead of black playing, bishop takes queen on d1. So remember on move five, De Legal sacrifices his queen. Says, go ahead, take my queen. And St. Brie does, and then he checkmates his opponent. But what if St. Brie had simply played DXE5? What happens then? Well, we can play queen takes g4, obviously. Maybe black develops with a threat, knight f6. Queen can go back to g3. Knight b to d7. d3. None of these moves are forced, but they, they, they're a logical, a logical continuation. Black plays bishop g7 white castles, and we're up a pawn. We're up a pawn. So had he not taken, had he not taken the queen again, even after playing g6, with Legal's trap, if knight, in the original game, if knight takes e5, black's not forced to take the queen here. Instead, he could take back And white is up a pawn, has a nice position. So, so it is a solid trap. It is a solid trap. Um, and now, finally, let's just look at the stem game, the feature game, real fast. Um, e4, e5, knight f3, d6, bishop c4, attacking the belly button, bishop g4, pinning the knight, um, knight c3, g6, Knight takes e5. There's that surprising Legal's trap. Bishop takes d1. Bishop takes the belly button. Check. King e7. And knight d5 mate. I hope you really enjoyed this lesson and that you remember Legal's trap and Legal's mating position. This has been Chris Torres, and this is To the Point.